Dobre večer, dragi prijatelji. Na, im cene što sve še pek, pek je opaten. I have to say many thanks, not only for the nice introduction, but also for the possibility to meet you, because the question of media and communication is a key question for the human beings, for the society, for better mutual understanding, uh, and so on and so on. And uh, my first sentence is going in this direction that we are living in a time where a lot of basic things of our, of our living together is changing. And along this uh, I want uh, to explain you the importance of the media, to impo the importance uh, of the communication as a precondition for more democracy, I would say not only more democracy, I think as a precondition for democracy, because the basics are, are really changing. I think uh, maybe uh, it's not so obvious for you because you, you are born in a certain situation and so on and so on, and in the average I think you are, in comparison with me, very young. Uh, I can tell you my birth year, I born 1941, and as I grew up, uh, I grew up uh, in an Austria which was reborn after the Second World War uh, and uh, we had to try to improve uh, the situation, which I think was manageable. We were living uh, at the rim, at the eastern rim of the Iron Curtain. It had a certain impact. Uh, I think for the majority here it's not even imaginable. Uh, I think 60 kilometers eastwards and 80 kilometers northwards, uh, as I grew up, the world was ending. I think it was the Iron Curtain, uh, it was not possible to go on the other side. And what a big difference, uh, maybe if you talk with the elder generation, uh, you can see what these changes are mean and what importance it has. Because my parents and my grandparents told me uh, about uh, areas of Europe now, this time on the other side of the Iron Curtain, they were quite familiar with this. And I had not the slightest idea, not the possibility to go there, uh, and so on and so on. And later on, uh, if I may add uh, to my CV given here, uh, I tried, aside of my political uh, jobs and obligations, I tried to do something for democracy on the other side of the Iron Curtain. I was supporting the different groups uh, here, uh, for example, Solidarność on the side of uh, the Polish, which played a very important role, uh, Madia Demokrata Forum, that was in Hungary, here also a movement uh, towards more democracy, uh, or a Carta 77, it was a democracy movement in Czech Republic, uh, it was similar uh, on the Slovak side and so on and so on. Why, I may tell you, because I was very much impressed by the fact that we had the chance on the Austrian side and on the Western side to live uh, under condition of freedom, uh, of all the possibilities, and on the other side it was not possible. Having my ears, the stories which we are told, uh, as I said, by parents and grandparents, uh, how the life was there and how beautiful these parts were and so on and so on. And then along my career it happened to me and it was mentioned here with Stability Pact, I think to jump in uh, and to help uh, to the development of democracy and that was also uh, to assist uh, concerning uh, medias as an instrument uh, for democracy. I think I did it also in the eastern parts of Europe, or 
better to say in Central Europe, uh, because this was a tremendous change, I think. I grew up in a country which was, uh, as I said, at the rim of the free world, and uh, then I was taking political responsibility as we were back in the center of Europe. It's a huge difference. I think uh, I learned the importance of neighborhood, because for a very long time we had no, no neighbors because we were cut off. I think neighborhood is also a question for you, because you have to manage after the downfall of Yugoslavia to live with your neighbors. You were living with your neighbors in one country for sure, uh, but now I think uh, you are in a situation where the differentiation and the distance and so on and so on plays a very important role, but you are going hopefully to a new kind of neighborhood that means neighborhood in Europe. Uh, whole Europe is learning on this subject. The job is not yet done. Even by countries who have for a longer time in the European Union, by the refugee question, by the actual refugee question, we are learning what uh, this situation means, and I think it is a tough job to live with this. It's not only the question, uh, where are they going, and uh, uh, do we have we to, to build up fences, or one expression which is very much used, have you to build up the fortress Europe and so on and so on, which by the way is a nonsense because it's not so nice to live in a fortress. I think it has some importance I think to defend uh, you against others, but you cannot commute to the other side, you do not know what is on the other side, and so you have enemies. If you are living in a fortress, outside they are all enemies in the understanding, yeah? and you have not the knowledge of what, what is here going in. I think so far it happened to me that being involved in a lot of changes, especially also to Southeast Europe. In addition to my CV, I may tell you how did I arrive uh, in these jobs concerning stability pact uh, and so on. Uh, I think I told you uh, some minutes ago that I tried to improve democracy in the neighborhood of Austria, and this is a nice personal story. Uh, I think it was registered outside, and I did as a vice mayor of Vienna uh, a visit to the United States. The Austrian ambassador in Washington made a lunch in my honor, and then I was told uh, a deputy secretary of state, uh, deputy foreign minister of the United States uh, is here and he approached me uh, and said to me, ah, uh, you are the vice mayor of Vienna, uh, you are from Vienna, yes, yeah. and then he was asking me from which district. I think uh, I was really wondering because a deputy secretary of state how shall he know that we have districts in Vienna? And so far, I was understanding immediately that his roots are from Vienna. And in reality, I think uh, I said to him, I'm out of the ninth district of Vienna. And then I did something, I'm until now not really understanding uh, why I uh, was doing so. I said to him, and you are also from this district. Uh, this district had a huge portion of Jews uh, before the Nazi came and then they were all kicked out and so on and so on and he was one of the families living in the ninth district and this created a long lasting friendship. It is really a nice story, maybe it's more an anecdote but it influenced uh, me for a lifetime. I was out of the government and uh, was uh, at the Wissenschaftskolleg, College of Science, in Berlin for three months to study and to write a book. And uh, then he was calling me by phone and saying, oh, my friend, uh, the American government is building up uh, the Southeast European Cooperative Initiative. I have not the slightest idea what it was. He explained to me, uh, Yugoslavia has fallen into pieces, but what we need is a cooperation of the countries coming out of Yugoslavia because his life is going on and they are neighbors. Uh, 
are you prepared to overtake it because you have some knowledge of these eastern parts of Europe and so on and so on. And in the reality, uh, by my activities, I had a certain knowledge about uh, in the time of Yugoslavia of what was the partial Republic of Slovenia, uh, of Croatia, uh, of Serbia. I had not too much knowledge about Macedonia, Bosnia Herzegovina, uh, only uh, in limits here. Um, I said, okay, it's a nice challenge, and I overtook it, and I had to do two jobs. It's really nice to tell the story. I think, uh, okay, they are different states, but they have to communicate. That was not about media, first of all. Uh, you have to do an arrangement that the trafficking of goods can happen over the newly built borders. Uh, I created, this was my first move, an arrangement, a treaty that it was possible to go from one country to the other. Today you won't believe it, but this was a problem uh, because every of these new point states tried to close up itself. Huh? Please, no neighbors. And the second job, I totally failed. Uh, I was told by the Americans, ah, they will be all uh, quite soon a part of the European Union, which did not happen, by the way, until now. Uh, and they should not uh, build up big border stations. I failed because they are everywhere big border stations. Uh, that's playing even uh, a very interesting role. I may tell you, just as an anecdote, if you are going from Slovenia to Croatia and you're going behind a, a Slovenian car trying to enter Croatia, you need more time because uh, my beloved Croatian friends are looking very exactly and very sharp to Slovenians. It's easier for an Austrian to go. And if you are going back the other way around from Croatia behind this uh, a Croatian car to Slovenia, then you have also to wait longer because the Slovenians are then looking very exactly. It's idiotic, may I say, and I have several times told it to the Slovenian of the Croatian government, so, but so it is. Um, and my job was they shall not uh, build up these huge border stations, which they did. I failed on this. And then we tried to do some other things. Uh, I have to confess. As a European, I have to say, the Americans got the message earlier that we need a regional cooperation here uh, and they tried to do something. Uh, the Europeans were involved with the Americans, but first of all, they kept that. Uh, we have other jobs and so it's not interesting and so on. But then they learned the lesson. Maybe you, you know the name Joschka Fischer, he was foreign minister in Germany in a certain time and he understood this and from him uh, came the initiative to build up the stability pact for South East Europe. Uh, there was somebody before me, one and a half year, Bodo Hombach, and then I was appointed by my specific knowledge from South East European Cooperative Initiative by the way, I may tell you, I dissolved uh, the Stability Pact for South East Europe in 2008 and we brought the same content to the Regional Cooperation Council, which is now based in Sarajevo, uh, and the Serb, Goran Svilanovic, is in charge of it. He is a kind of, uh, there was in between uh, a Croat uh, and now it's a Serb, he's quasi uh, my successor uh, here. Uh, a stability pact, and we are coming closer to the media as a precondition for more democracy, we tried to do something for medias, because it was a newly media landscape. The medias here in former Yugoslavia and the other, other countries were state-owned, uh, state-controlled for sure, and for sure for our imagination about democracy it was quite necessary to do it. We spent a lot of money. I think uh, I dare also to report about my failures. We did not do a very good job on this subject. Uh, I think what we did is was training of journalists, uh, making seminars uh, and so on and so on. What means real journalism? 
it had some success because some good journalists were born by the, some others uh, less and so on and so on. Uh, that was not very successful. The market was open and also uh, European uh, media companies could enter. I have to confess it was not a success story because some companies, uh, I think I named three, the one was Watts, Westdeutsche Allgemeine Zeitung, a German company, a huge company with the regional newspapers, entered, for example, they got Politica here in this country and some others, and different. Uh, then uh, a Swiss company, Ringier, uh, and the third company, an Austrian company, Styria. They are extremely strong in Slovenia and Croatia. Uh, and I think this, what they did was a failure. Uh, because I think they tried to make a good business and to earn a lot of money. Uh, but the improvement of democracy did not really happen. And by the way, that they are trying to make arrangements, uh, the companies, with the political situation and with the politicians, it went the wrong way. Well, this I have to see. I'm a fan of the European Union, but if you're a fan of something, you have to be also quite open where are the mistakes that you are improving. Not everything is quite okay. Uh, if you are in favor, by principle on something, and we have to say also, no, things went wrong. Here, the things went wrong. That especially the Germans uh, put a lot of money in this, uh, but they was never able, I think, to control where the money was really going. I have my suspicions, but uh, this is not a place, I think, to report about my suspicions. Uh, that was not quite okay. And here the control, uh, was not really happening. It was not the problem of the European Union and the control by the European Union. It was by the nation states because I think every member of the European Union did its own policy, uh, uh, which is I think also until now the great problem and the great challenge for the development uh, of Europe. Uh, here I was involved in the media and you have a rush through different situations. First of all, I think uh, a lot of private TVs grew up. I remember Albania, not the biggest country of the region. If you had an event there, there were immediately eight TV stations. It's not anymore existing, but everybody was convinced, I think, with modern media, so I think you, you are jumping in the future, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, this has already changed. And then, this was the next step of the development of the state-owned medias, uh, they came up oligarchs. And uh, the oligarchs tried to become member, uh, owners uh, of the medias, out of political reasons, out of business reasons, uh, and so on and so on. And there was not uh, a very good control. We proposed some legislation to the different countries, but we failed totally. Uh, I think by the influence of the oligarchs, the le legislation was hindered. Quite consequently, uh, really happening uh, here, and partly it's still the situation. It has to be said quite clearly. Uh, then I tried to be involved in an organization, uh, controlling a little bit this situation, uh, and to change it by publicity. Publicity plays a very important role for democracy. Uh, I think I'm part of uh, the Southeast European media organization, CEMO, an abbreviation, and we are trying to control it. We are meeting every year, uh, and uh, for sure we are trying to give some advices. Also, I started, that's the reason why I'm visiting professor at Duke University in North Carolina, uh, an activity by a professor there, El Mitskevich, started uh, for this situation in Eastern Europe totally. Uh, and here, I think there was given some good advices and some good rules, but uh, nothing is perfect and these activities are not even very perfect, uh, I have to say, uh, here. So far I described my involvement uh, in this context and I'm still uh, involved here with all the difficulties. I repeat what I've said. My dear friends, we are living in a time of tremendous changes. I think for my lifetime, I may say, 
if I compare the different uh, developments through the 50 and more years, I have a view on it. I may say the changes of the current time are really gorgeous. I think, uh, and by majority you are very young. It will be your job to handle it, because it's your future which is happening. What is really changing? Changing is first of all technology. I think uh, it needed a very long time after the invention of the printing press by Gutenberg that we arrived at the next uh, uh, technical possibility for uh, spreading news, spreading media, spreading uh, information and so on and so on. The next step was for sure radio and step here to electronics and, and TV. Uh, now we are living in the time of Facebook and that's also a total change here. And this is uh, opening the view to another tremendous change. I think we are still organized, all the countries, as nation states. But the nation state is not anymore the reality. I think first of all to look to the continent, Europe okay, here we did something, we are not really able to handle it, but uh, a lot of efforts have happened, uh, but globalization is the real uh, new thing. You are living in the reality of globalization. Uh, very primitively defined, everything that is happening there is here of importance. I think we are totally connected uh, here by all these instruments. We can get information at the same time. With one problem, we have no rules for it. Globalization is like jungle. It is the law of the jungle. The more powerful are winning. Because we have no political level uh, to manage this global situation. Uh, in all my, uh, they are important institutions, in all my friendship to the United Nations, it has no importance. I think on a lot of things. For example, I'm still connected with politics, uh, all what has happened concerning Crimea, Ukraine, Middle East, and the, uh, was happening and is still happening without United Nations. I think it's not even discussed. So far this level is the reality missing in politics. Even if you are going to economy and to the business, the business is globalized. And for sure we would uh, need a, r a lot of rules uh, to handle the business. It's not existing. What are the consequences? Banking crisis. Uh, climate problem. Oil crisis. And so on. A long list of crises which are existing because we have no rules. On this level there's nothing existing and I think it's even difficult to get regional cooperation and uh, regulations for a region. So far we are behind our time. You have to be aware that will be the real change. On the contrary, I think in Europe we have a move uh, even backwards. We had more cooperation in the European <coughs> Union but now if you are looking to the last decision in the Netherlands concerning the arrangement with Ukraine, there was a majority not to do it. But we have a responsibility concerning Ukraine and, and other parts, therefore we need partnerships. Uh, and uh, the banking crisis and the euro crisis and so on and so on is something which can be only handled in this way. So we have, uh, I think, a, a very illogical development. For the moment, by the mood uh, of the public, of the different countries, we don't need more Europe, we don't need more income. We, we want only on ourselves. I think there's a nice sentence in Vienna, hopefully my English translation is right. Everybody thinking on him or herself. Only me, I'm thinking on myself. This is the situation. I think everybody is for the moment thinking of myself, protecting against everything, but this is not solving problems. I think, uh, on the contrary, it's making more difficulties. 
because the few problems we were able to solve, for example, the Eurozone until now is comparatively stable. How is it done? By the European Central Bank. The European Central Bank has more power than the Commission uh, and the European Parliament and they are keeping uh, until now the currency of the Euro together. I do not know if it really fits and is really working for the long term or for the, for the moment. I think a lot of other things like uh, the downfall of all the banks possible I think was hindered by this. A refugee crisis already mentioned. I think now they are all learning, first of all, to protect themselves. In the region where I'm at home, now the idea of all the governments is we have to build up fences. I think we are building up one fence after the other. I think they are not learning out of the history. The biggest fence of the world is the Chinese wall. It's very long. It didn't protect China. It does not really work. And all these fences were in reality not working. It's not solving the problem. We are using uh, even the picture of we have to build up fortresses. I think, okay, you can feel protected if you are living in a fortress, uh, but you don't know what is outside of the fortress. And in reality, I think no fortress can live alone. You are depending on the others. You are depending on the food, you are depending on the cooperation, you are depending, 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 because we are here together. In some fields we are trying to learn it. I think concerning the climate difficulties, nobody is telling you that a nation state can do it alone. I think I'm in charge of the so-called Danube initiative also. We cannot decide by law uh, that from Germany on the river Danube uh, that uh, nothing is coming by the water. Uh, I think no garbage and so on and so on. It's coming. So far we are learning on the river Danube that we have to be together to solve the problem. Difficult, I may tell you. Because first of all, everybody is finger pointing on the others. They have to, to solve the problem. They have. And why they are not doing? The question is right, are we doing? Uh, I think here you can see what is really necessary step by step. This is one of the great changes uh, which are in reality existing. It's going even further on. Uh, the European Union built up Frontex, so the organization to protect the borders of the European Union. May I tell you the last nice report I saw? Uh, and we had a, a politician out of this country in Vienna telling us how it is. It was a deputy prime minister of Macedonia, oh, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, the official name, also one of the nonsenses. Uh, of Macedonia. Uh, I think uh, he told us Austrians that Macedonia is protecting Austria. Where? At the border of Greece. Where the European Union? On the side of Macedonia or on the side of Greece? So a non-EU member state is protecting us against the refugees coming from a EU country. Huh? Here you can see how crazy the things are uh, here in reality. Uh, that's one of the examples uh, here existing. And so I can go on uh, to different cases. Uh, the last nice case is after what has happened in Paris and recently in Brussels. Now they are all proclaiming in the TV, there is no cooperation between the security service and the police. We need more information for the other. None of these governments were hindered to give the information to the others. They didn't do it. Why are they telling me? I don't have the information. It's the obli obligations of the governments, of the police, of the security uh, institutions and so on and so on to deliver it. Hopefully I was able to explain you in which situation we are and what the changes is. You might ask what has it to do with the media? Everything. Because the question to report about this, to give a feeling, to give a feeling for the responsibility and so on and so on, is the job of the media. And so far it's right, it's not only more democracy, I think it is democracy on which, uh, democracy is depending on the medias. 
There is by the uh, philosopher out of old Greece, Aristotle, a very nice sentence. I like it. The sentence is, democracy reaches so far as the voice of the herald. It's quite a clear message because democracy in old Athens was founded uh, on the meeting of the citizens on the marketplace. And so far, if you want to decide on the marketplace by voting and so on and so on, you have to understand what is said. What has he said uh, here? It's quite clear because you can articulate it loud. If the marketplace is bigger, as our states are, and you have a lot of citizens, it's not possible to cry loud to what's necessary. I think you have to give the message and to inform. And here, I'm back to this, what I said in the beginning, the world is becoming bigger. And so far, it is a key question that the communication is really functioning. It is the key question for the future of democracy. It's easy to explain. If we are looking to countries where the democracy is reduced, is vanishing or is even not existing, what is the first aim of a government or of politics? To close the medias, to control the medias. I think now with the modern possibilities uh, by internet, my beloved Chinese friends are always putting everything off the internet uh, that it cannot be given. All the messages about the Panama leaks they are obviously the leading uh, uh, people of Chinese made a good job and made a lot of enterprises outside in Panama or elsewhere. I think it's immediately pushed out of the internet, eh? cleaned up. May I say it will not work. I think it, the internet has a very nice uh, character I think you can go through different holes through and the information will arrive with difficulties and so on and so on. And that's really great. Uh, I think it's of a great importance. This is the importance or the precondition uh, for more democracy or for democracy by the medias. And I think to focus on this is of extreme importance. The quality of the freedom of the medias I repeat, the quality of the freedom of the media is deciding the quality of democracy. Because it's nothing else as getting information, being able to hear what's going on, having the possibility to judge the situation, to be able to articulate what do I want, what do I not want, and so on and so on. That's in the reality the key question. And the improvement uh, on the situation of democracy is the improvement on the conditions of the media. Now, I think the conditions of communication. Communication is sometimes only said, aha, what I can hear and what I can read. I think it's even more. Uh, and it is totally changing. I have to confess, uh, as internet came up, electronic media is by this, I was really convinced, as it was said, now we have the total democracy. I may say I have some doubts in the meanwhile. Because medias are also used for the contrary. I think what's happening in the medias, I don't know how it is in Serbia, but I can tell it uh, for the part of Europe where I'm at home, hate speech is coming up in a real horrible way. And we have to develop uh, a system of control or of a counterbalance uh, to this that is really happening. Quality of democracy. I think it's very much depending. And here you can see, that was my first statement, beg your pardon, it lasted long to explain. Uh, I think here the way of communication is deciding in which direction we are going. This is the key question. So far you had a, had a faculty which has a great importance for the future. For sure you need also some other uh, fields, uh, to, for example, legislation, also the law, and so on and so on. Uh, you need also psychology, how can you inform somebody, and so on and so on. And here I'm at the next step, what is necessary for more democracy? Education. Because if you cannot understand the information you are getting, there's no chance. On the contrary, I think if you are doing information 
in in a very uh, popular way. If you are doing it uh, in a very aggressive way, you can be convince a lot, but that's not democracy. I think that's very much depending. And here, by the way, there's come coming something in, which is extremely important, uh, and it is also a precondition for more democracy. It's a question of the values. Which values are in common? That's the big problem of Europe, for example. Uh, if you're listening at the TV, different TV stations, it's always told, ah, the European Union and the member states are standing for the European values. I want to be quite open to you, being a fan, I say it again, for the European Union, I'm not quite sure that those who are speaking about the European values are really knowing what the European values are. That's one of the formulas which is easily used, uh, European values, but I think it has to be developed, what does it mean? For sure, human rights, but the human rights are endangered every day, every minute, uh, in some places, and so on and so on. Uh, that's also a very dangerous way we are going in a certain limbo uh, in this direction. I think this is a framework uh, which uh, for, sure, for sure is existing. Uh, Euro uh, European values uh, means the respect of the human being. I think uh, maybe we can make a test run. Is the human being everywhere respected? Is it done in the right way? How are the conditions for the living? Next step is, I think you can only live together if you have solidarity. That's one of the key questions. Key questions socially. I think the gap between the rich and the poor is becoming even bigger in our states. Uh, I think in comparison to the part in Europe we are living, it's for sure bigger than it is here. Uh, but it is a general problem and it has to be discussed. Uh, and I think to create the right justice uh, which you for sure is here existing. That's one level. Another level is what about the capacity of decision making? That's also depending. And here the media are playing a very important role because the decision making has to be explained, it has to be uh, founded, it has to be justified in which way it is done, it has to be explained. And then we are arriving uh, at a very important uh, point, that's a language. Beg your pardon, I don't mean the different language. For sure I'm not understanding Serbian language besides some birds, uh, and that's it. For sure that's a problem. But uh, the simultaneous translation is already invented. Uh, that's uh, not a problem. The language is the content of the words. I think here, as a politician, I have to confess, politics has sometimes a tendency to use a language which should not be understood. I think there are some fields of our living together, for example, economy. If I'm reading all the articles of the big economists on those who are doing science and so on and so on and making proposals, it's sometimes in a language which is not understood. We can go a little bit further on. The products of the banks, which led to the difficulties of the banking situation, were presented in a language which was not understood by the consumer. I think uh, there's a certain tendency, I think, to work undercover, uh, using some words which are not generally understandable, uh, to sell it better. It sounds beautiful, but what is in? It's not only the question what is out, it's always the question what is in. And that's a problem of language. In connection with the question of languages, you have to reach that people are speaking. May I say, as a former politician, I have to confess, sometimes it's more clever not to speak. Huh? But then there's no information given. Huh? And it's also depending that the other side that somebody is listening. Are you sure that we are always listening where it is really necessary? I think here you need also a control. That's the question of the medias. That's a real important uh, as a precondition of uh, living here together. 
So far we need a culture of exchange. I will tell you a primitive example. I don't know, uh, I think sometimes uh, you can even now in Austria see Serbian TV, RTS. Uh, so far I'm brushing through, having an impression by, by the picture and so on and so on. But the main mistake of all the TV stations, and I think around 50 or something I can receive, you have everywhere talk shows. In each channel, talk shows. Hmm? I was fed up about the talk shows and had the idea, why do we not have a European talk show? Because Europe is a common subject. It's not existing. Don't say it's a question of uh, translation, because I already said simultaneous translation is already invented. For sure you need something here, and for sure in the TV you need also a micro, as I have here, okay. Huh? Then I was running to the European Broadcasting Union, where the, the public broadcasting station and TV stations are together. I said, why do we not have a, a European talk show? Ah, I got the answer. This is an interesting question. Like, why this is only an interesting question, where is the solution? Uh, uh, we tried to discuss it, but all the uh, national companies said, then we have to divide uh, the income uh, of the advertisement. And nobody wants to divide. So far, we are able to look to football matches, skiing, and so on and so on, by European, by international cooperation, no problem. And it is translated, and you can see who is jumping in skiing, and who is going down the slalom, and who is running in, in, in athletics, and so on and so on. But on politics and discussions, and democracy is discussions, is not existing. Because we have to divide the advertisement. Here you can see the key question. So far it's more a joke which I'm make, making, uh, may I say, there's only one European talk show. That's an Eurosong contest. Because here are all looking, why is this a, a talk show? Because at the end, the different countries are asked for points. 12 points, 0 points, and so on and so on. And you are getting here an impression. I'm always looking at this because a certain kind of nationalism is coming up here. Whom am I giving 12 points, 10 points, 5 points, 0 points? And here you can see connections. Who likes whom? I think it is a real political event which is happening. And I'm always telling my colleagues in politics, look at this. Here you can see who is in favor of whom and who is against whom. That's a really clear message. That's more political, all, all the reports and discussions and so on and so on existing because it's giving an overview about our neighborhood situation here within Europe. You can see the importance of medias. I think clearly said, and that's my lifelong experience, not only political news, not only political discussions are uh, performing democracy. I think you have also a lot of politics uh, in entertainment, uh, in other things, uh, in even movies. I think reporting about the characters uh, of uh, human beings out of different countries. I think pre-judges are also performed by this in a certain way. That's a real important, uh, the importance of maybe theatre, uh, of, of movies and so on and so on, political messages. I think you won't have seen it because it's a long time ago. I remember a movie, uh, Red Heat. It was a movie where my fellow citizen Arnold Schwarzenegger was acting here. What was the story uh, of the movie? And in this story you can see all the prejudges which are done by a movie which was seen by millions. The story is from Soviet Union in this time, narcotics were coming to the United States. And they want to control it. United States on the one side, also the Soviet government on the other side. 
What was the first message? The narcotics are transported in the Soviet Union by Georgians. You know the relations of the Russians to the Georgians, which happened recently? I think that was the first transport. Where did they put it? They put it to the black Muslims in the United States. The next prejudge huh? against Muslims and blacks. Quite clear. It's a white collar uh, argument here existing. Who was fighting uh, this event? Arnold Schwarzenegger as, uh, in the Soviet security. Huh? Uh, giving the sign, it was a, in the time of uh, a slight cooperation between the Soviet Union and uh, the Americans. I think uh, Reagan time uh, softening a little bit. And who was the FBI on the other side? It was a Jew. Huh? In favor here of the Jews. Also a certain message of Hollywood, done in a certain way. My friends, this is communication. But it is a kind of precondition of mutual understanding. And it has a lot to do with democracy. Here you can see pro the broad field is. It's not only, again I say it in the news, it's not only again what is really written. I think if you are looking to the backgrounds existing, I think you are getting uh, really a, a tough impression uh, of uh, the things. Other subject. Democracy is following the rules of the majority. But the values are also have the content, we have to look to the minorities. And they should have the possibilities to survive. That's one of the most difficult things, because we are feeling more powerful if we are in the majority. Eh? Uh, this is a real dangerous development of mass movements, because they are giving the impression I'm in the majority, I'm deciding what's going on, uh, and so on and so on. This is one of the real important values of a democracy, that the minority has to have the right uh, to survive. And there's one precondition for this situation, that they are able to speak with each other. Again, I want to, to read, to listen and to speak. That's very much connecting here. And the medias are a kind of speaking and also of listening, because it has to be report, to be reported uh, others what are saying here. I think you might wonder what I'm uh, telling you here, uh, because then we can open uh, for sure another chapter about the legal frameworks for the medias, about the freedom, about the ownership about the medias, that plays a very important role. I think it has to be transparent. There was a certain time also in my country, uh, if it is state-owned and controlled by politics, then it is better for the freedom of the media. On the contrary, I think uh, it went also in the wrong direction. Because every right uh, is uh, depending how it is used, in which way. So far you can have positive regulation if they are positively used, or you can have on regulations a negative use and it's going in the other direction. And here you need a certain kind of public control. Therefore the publicity, the open discussion plays a very important role. That has two conditions. Condition number one, that it is possible to speak publicly and free. The other condition is also that somebody is speaking. Here I have sometimes doubts, because we have a tendency, maybe it's also in your country, that we are not using the rights which are preserved by democracy to us. That is starting with the uh, right to vote. I am not happy that all the participants for voting is going down. Because as a citizen I have an obligation to articulate myself. And I think to be quite open, if I'm not finding somebody who is presenting myself, then I have to try to do it myself and to find, find some friends which can do it together. I think uh, that's of great importance. Otherwise, I think it's not really working. And that has also to be communicated. 
given expression. That's of great importance. For the part of uh, Europe that I know better, we have a certain tendency to go out of democracy. I think I'm not any more interesting, it's not covering my interest. I don't find anybody whom I like, and so, okay. I think if you don't find anybody you like, I think uh, takes the next one, which might be of minor uh, agreement by you, but you have to find somebody. To go out is voting against yourself. If you are not taking part in democracy, I think you are losing your right. Rights are, are in the best way preserved if they are used. It's one of our dangers that we are not using our rights. Uh, because I think it needs in the development of the humankind a long time to develop these rights. And if we are not, we are not using it, we are losing them. Don't forget this, so it's extremely important. As far as I know, parts of the young generation uh, in Europe, there's a, a certain tendency, uh, that's old nonsense, I keep out. It has nothing to do with it. If you are not satisfied, I think you have to do, uh, you have to act, you have to be involved, and you have to formulate alternatives. Otherwise, it does not work. Done by media's articulation. Here you can see the key importance, which for sure is existing in this. Last point of the most difficult uh, link. Medias have also the importance, I think, to create identity. That's one of the most difficult words which are existing. Very often used European identity or the identity of my nation and so on and so on. That's extremely difficult. Is the identity the average opinion? Is the identity the average character uh, of, of citizens or so on? I think it's mainly a question of content, for which values uh, are you really fighting? What is in common with the other? And that has to be defined, and how is the definition happening? Also by communication, also by the medias. It plays a very important role. Uh, and this is connected with one of the demands, uh, and I think you are, you have the chance, I think, to prepare it at your faculty and your study. It's quality of information, the quality of medias. Here, I beg your pardon, I'm a little bit critical of the quality of the medias, uh, which is happening now. Everything must be entertainment. I don't know it in Serbia because I'm not able to read the newspapers or I can only look into the picture of the Serbian TV <laughs> if it is reported. Uh, but the question of the quality plays a very important role. And I think here we have to do everything, I think, to keep the quality and to keep the eye on it is one of the obligations. And you are studying it. I think that's one of the great jobs of the universities, I think, to prepare human beings to be able to judge a situation and to articulate it. It's not, it should be for pleasure that you're studying, yes, why not? But it is also an obligation which you have to de deliver later on. So far, you're studying a very important subject, which has a great importance not only for yourself, that's quite clear, for the others, for the time, and for the condition of the next generation. Because here, I think we can only have the basis of what is prepared by the generation now being responsible for the next generation and next generation and next generation. I think here we miss the development. And I repeat at the end when one uh, sentence or one report I did, you are living in a time where the things are changing tremendously. And I think keep your eyes, keep your ears open, uh, keep your activity to join it. Because we are deciding what's now going on. And it is extremely important, especially for Europe. I think we are, in, and that's the last change which I want to describe, we are not aware what Europe means. Europe, my friends, is only 7% of the global population. 7%, not more. We are still a little bit more uh, of 20% of the economic power of the world, 
But this percentage is going down because others are coming up, China, India, South America, and so on and so on. And I think if some becoming better, then our percentage is going down if we are keeping uh, the quality. And so far, I think it is a real challenge that we Europeans are able, I don't say to defend ourselves. I think we have to know, identity question, for what are we Europeans standing? That's extremely important. Not in a rivalry. Maybe, yes, competition, why not? Uh, but competition in the sense for being better and to communicate it also to the other. And the great challenge of communication in the future will be that we are able, I think, to speak with the others uh, all over the world because we are living on one globe. Concerning the ecological situation, step by step we are understanding that we are using the same globe, that the same earth. And uh, if we are not able to handle the things, then maybe our living conditions are worse. But this is also true for the living conditions concerning economy, concerning food, uh, concerning the political situation, concerning freedom, uh, and so on and so on. And about this all, we have to communicate. We need the media uh, to speak with each other. And so far, I think you have a very responsible job, and I wish you all the best. Many thanks for your patience. Thanks for the lecture. Bye-bye. You already met a couple of times.